be recording now. Um, you know, we, we will be we will be doing some things uh, on the Hammer publication, and I will make some announcements on that and a request because there are loads of people here, of course, from the program alumni. We are looking to you to help celebrate this 20 years of uh, of its existence, right? So I'll I'll, I'll make that announcement after. Um, I do want to kick us off, and you won't hear too much of me other than trying to say. Um, zip it to some of the guys so we can have a good discussion because I'm sure they've got a lot to say. Let me kick it off and welcome you all. Um, we've got uh, Professor Dorr with us, uh, Mr. Wayne Bertrand, Dr. Wilson and Dr. Ryan Ramsuk. So I won't uh, spend too much time reading their bios. We should all know who they are, but I do want to, if there's anyone that doesn't know them, uh, let me start with Professor Dorr. He was the first holder of the TTMC Trinidad and Tobago Methanol Company Chair in Petroleum Engineering in the Department of Chemical Engineering at UE. Um, and he was the head of the Petroleum Engineering Unit from 1999 to 2011, where he retired, right, in 2011. Um, joined UE in August 1999, gaining tenure in February 2004, and was selected for the Vice Chancellor's Award for Research Accomplishments and Service to the University Community in 2004 and 5. Welcome, Professor Dorr. Thank you for joining. There's one further um, point. Can you can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, I actually I was an external examiner in 1989, so my oh, my good. my contact with Trinidad and the Petroleum School uh, goes back even further, even before right. you were born almost. Well, we'll talk about the uh, geological timescale a bit later, Prof. But um, <laughs> next on the list is uh, Wayne Bertrand. Uh, so nice to see you, Mr. Bertrand. It's been so long since you scolded me many days at UE. <laughs> um, who retired in 2008 as the president's operations at the petroleum company of Trinidad and Tobago, Petrotrin. He has been an honorary fellow uh, in petroleum studies from 2015 to 2017 in the faculty of engineering at UE, having retired from, from the university where he served as coordinator, which a lot of you all on this call will know, um, of the petroleum geosciences program from 2008 to 2015. Uh, Mr. Bertrand has been a consultant since 2008 to several companies internationally operating in TNT. Welcome, Mr. Bertrand. Thank you. Next on the list, we've got uh, Dr. Wilson. Dr. Brent Wilson is a noted authority uh, in bugs or forearms in Ostracotta. He's published over 85 papers in micropaleontology most of the material on um, from the neogene of Trinidad and the Eastern Caribbean Sea uh, with with over 14 articles in newspapers and books. So uh, we, we a lot of us know Dr. Wilson. He taught and researched micropaleontology at UE from 2002 to 2017, and he's uh, currently professor, professor emeritus of paleontology and geology for the geosciences program at UE. Welcome, Dr. Wilson. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you, Leon. Yes, it's been so long. Um, and finally, last but not least, uh, we've got Dr. Ryan Ramsuk, who is the coordinator of the Petroleum Geosciences Program, um, senior lecturer of the program and master's programs currently in the Petroleum Studies Unit. He's an upstream consultant with over 15 years of international, local, uh, and local upstream industry experience, uh, and the current subsurface lead for Trinity Exploration and Production Limited. He sat roles uh, across different countries, Colombia, Guyana, Jamaica, and is also the executive director um, uh, and engineering at, sorry, at Optimal Geoscience and Engineering Solutions. He's also the executive director at Ivis Energy in Calgary for the last three years. Welcome, Dr. Ramsuk. Good. Good, guys. How's it going? So, so the idea of this is uh, a bit of a catch up, right? It's 20 years since we started. And I guess let's kick this off with maybe a, a blast, you know, a look in the past, right? Um, let me start maybe with Professor Dorr, given some of the history that I just read out. Uh, 
and Prof, I would also, uh, you know, want to hear on this particular topic from from uh, Dr. Wilson and, and Mr. Bertrand. Tell us how it got started. What were some of the big challenges that you faced? Yeah, the UE Geosciences program. What was it like back then? Uh, right. Um, the usual phrase that one starts with these things. Can you hear me? I'm curious to see who the uh, who all the initials are. At some stage, it would take quite a long time to read them all out. Who, who is here and how many of them I know and how many of them might know me? Uh, it all started, um, obviously, that in Trinidad, there was no um, geology type program uh, in Trinidad. There was a geology program in Mona, but there wasn't one in specifically uh, directed towards uh, geology. Or, uh, and expl exploration and the government felt that was wrong they wanted local talent and in March 2001 the then Dean who is Clement Sankat came to me and said Richard we've got to do something about uh, petroleum geoscience or something um, I found out that BP were very active and they wanted people and that they were in fact uh, tying up with Leicester University to do seismic out there, then come back. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, but in March 2001, I was walking around saying, I've been asked to, to devise a program in petroleum geoscience. I'm not quite sure what it is. I'm not sure which campus it should be in. Should it be in Trinidad or should it be in uh, Jamaica or should it be in um, Barbados or wherever? We have no staff. We have no students. We have no <laughs> syllabus. We have no f f funds, and we have nothing, and we want it by August. Um, the then principal was acting Bridget Berriton, who just laughed and said, impossible. Um, but uh, for me, 2001 was one of those golden years where everything you touched went right. And uh, the, the, the person in uh, BP was called, a chap called Ray Cassino, and he'd been trying, and he was geology orientated. And the person in charge of subsea uh, geology was, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's, I've forgotten it now. Um, Larry, Larry um, what was it you in, Larry? Tiazzi, uh, Larry Tiazzi. Larry Tiazzi, yes. And his, once he knew that we were doing, he said, well, if the program is going to succeed, it, it won't, it, no, if the programme won't succeed, it'll because it won't for lack of money. Um, and uh, Ray and me put forward a, 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 um, a syllabus, which at one stage, one of the referees took a look at it because I, I had uh, left, I pinched it from everywhere and had left that there were going to be field trips in Texas. And he said, is this evidence of poor editing? Um, we're not quite sure about that one. But anyway, we, we produced a pro, we produced a, 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 um, a syllabus and uh, I went round various places with it. Um, and uh, we had two people in the ministry. Um, um, I, I can't, one was a, geo, ge, ge, a geophysicist uh, and one was a geologist. Um, Mrs. King was the geologist. What was her name, Wayne? listening um, and I've forgotten who the, who the uh, uh, fairly bulky uh, geophysicist was but they were both fully supported also the minister was um, uh, uh, um, uh, Eric Eric Williams he was the minister and he taught on the program so you, you, uh, you everywhere we looked there were people who were pro UE and who were UE graduates of somewhere I remember I went to see Wayne at one stage and he was very pleasant, always welcoming, wished me the best of luck. And I think in his back of his mind was that I'll never see him again. Uh, um, and we, we put forward a, a, a syllabus. It went through, you have to go through N committees where N gets quite a large number to get anything through. And um, the faculty approved of it. And then we went on to um, the... Uh, uh, the, the the academic board and there Bridget was in charge and we, we got um, uh, 
um, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, uh, he, he was one of the deans. Um, uh, anyway, was all enthusiastic, and, and, and the board said, well, go ahead and do it if you can, uh, all thinking, well, you're wasting your time, old friend. Um, we then, I then went to see uh, uh, Tara Bacon, who's in charge of admissions, and she just said, I say, we want to put on a program called Geo Geoscience, and she said, and about time too. So that was uh, admissions sorted, and we were going around like that, everything. I remember one day, we, uh, uh, Sa Clem Sankat and I were in the Dean's office and uh, trying to convince Wilson Lala to come on board. And in that half hour, we got two faxes, one from the Ministry of Energy and one from the um, uh, Minister of Education. You, you remember what faxes were, both supporting. So everywhere we were, we were getting support. Uh, Clem had uh, nobbled the Dean of Science, who happened to be in, uh, in um, uh, Mona. Uh, Trevor Jackson was um, uh, head of head of geology in um, in Mona, Mona and Mona. didn't really offer much ob objection. So we, we had everybody supporting us. And, and to cut a long short story short, um, I went on holiday for the July. And when I came back, I found that um, Cindy Thomas, who had been the uh, head of chemical engineering had 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 a word with um uh Petrotrin and Petrotrin had nominated or had asked Wayne to come and help us so Wayne was we then re rejoined so Wayne was good with them getting the monies in from all the companies he was also good at getting staffing and um I was mucking around with, with, with the uh, university administration Come September, so, Wayne had got his people, had, had got various people, and then an advert went out, and I can give you a copy of it, and within a week we had 52 applicants, and we wanted only 15, so we had to uh, cut it down, and we, 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 people had come from, uh, uh, had jumped courses, had, had seen the thing, applications from everywhere, uh, quite a lot of state scholars, and it was a bloody good bunch. And uh, are, some are of them are qualified some, some, people. Some so, of them, some of them are on the call, eh, Professor Do? Uh, I think I saw yes. Rami's Rami's joining the call, who would have been in the first yes. well, ha, bunch, hi and, and them Sam all. and Clive. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, um, and congratulate Clive for his PhD from Leicester. Um, Hello, Nilo. Uh, taking it, taking so, its time, but well done. Uh, so, uh, but so by uh, by sep by end of August, we had a, we had a class and we had uh, everything all ready to go. Uh, a little later on, Sankat came to, came to us. I was sitting in chatting to Wayne, and he said, "Look, we've got some we've got some space there, but we need some plans, and uh, we haven't got any." Uh, well, Wayne scratched his head and said. I think I'm in charge of the education department of Petrotrin. I think there's an architect there somewhere. And within two days, we had the plans. Now, it's that sort of thing that happened all the time. Everything happened. And so we, 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 we had, at that stage, we had money, we had students, we had staffing, we had a syllabus, and we had that thing, and we had it all ready for August. Was, I think that is fantastic. Great. <laughs> and that's how we, okay. that's how we started. So, uh, so let me maybe ask uh, Mr. Bertrand. Thanks for that, Professor. Do. So, Mr. Bertrand, back then, the uh, you sound like the slick uh, dealer, uh, getting things done. What were some of the roadblocks you had to face, or was it all easy going, easy breezy, getting the, the um, sort of back, you know, the back office set up for this? Well, um, it's a good that Professor though he remembers a whole lot more than me. <laughs> Uh, uh, when when I got called um, or, or sent, um, uh, it was after the program was set up. Um, there was a program there, and there was no staff, and there were no students. Um, and I was sent by Petrotrin because I had a little argument with Petrotrin during the period, and they wanted to get rid of me. So um, an opportunity came, and and um, oh, wow. they. they, they <laughs> They sent me to UE. Um, so that's how I became um, the initial coordinator of the program. 
And like you said, we had lots of problems. I mean, there was there was um, no staff, no students. Uh, there was money. There were no 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 real facilities, infrastructure facilities. So we had to get that done, and had to get it done in no time. We did have money. Um, principal donors at that time would have been BP and BG and the Ministry of Energy, and um, from from Petrotrin. I think Petrotrin's donation was 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 me. They continued to pay me. Um, so we we eventually had to interview to get the 15 students because we had so many applying and they all came in with very high grades. They were either coming into, into engineering, into petroleum geoscience or medicine. And in some cases, um, we were tougher than medicine because we had to have more math um, to get into the program. Um, we, we, we managed to get all the staff that he said from, from um, various parts of industry, but we also had to, to do some um, courses in areas that we couldn't get staff. So we, we had to import some, some courses um, and the lecturers to, to give the 40 hours within one week. So we had to clear the timetable from the other people and, and donate the week to, to, to one course. And um, as you know, a, a course is, is supposedly 39 hours for the, for the unit. So we were able to get 40 hours within, within, a, within a week and were able to do that for some things. Um, I think geochemistry might have been one. Um, of course, we had no, no samples, no labs really. So of course, Petrotrin was available and um, we got some of that done down there. Uh, and of course, we had to we had to change things around to suit. Since we we were a little problematical with getting all the lecturers in the first in the first semester, what we did was take um, the engineering programs that all engineers have to do. So there was some of the math in there, and there was some chemistry that we had to do so that we guys when they when they would understand um, some organic chemistry and so on, and um, they may have had to do some civil engineering, but courses that all engineers had to do. And we, of course, packed that um, to fill the spaces where we didn't have lecturers yet. So the first year was, was, was quite interesting. And um, our students were so very good that they excelled in everything. Later on in the program, some, some of the students started to, to fail some of these um, full engineering courses, um, although they had the background. Um, and they had to repeat some of these courses. I see we on your smile, and you know something about that, do you? <laughs> um, but all in all, everything went off great, and um, we had a great deal of a great pack package of students, um, a good mixture, um, and we would say diversity and all kinds of mixtures. They were all there, um, and uh, at the end of the first three years, we had. We had a, an excellent results for the cohort. I mean, it was so excellent that that we had to be very careful um, how we how we assigned degrees because um, we got 50% first class honors people, and um, of course everybody in the rest of the faculty would look and want to know what we did um, and, and who did what and who know what and. <laughs> But it was all external examiners' work, um, so we we didn't have a problem in getting what we got. That's that's about all I want to say. Right. On that. No, thank you. So so uh, I mean, wow, flash flash in the that, that's a look look at uh, twenty years ago. I guess maybe to to make sure we we get some views from Ryan early on as well. Um, I wanted I want to start with you, Ryan. You know what you've seen in the last few years, and then maybe test with Brent next, uh, and Mr. Bertrand. Um, what do you think? What have you seen in your time in the program in terms of impact to companies? I, I'm interested to to understand sort of present day and and kind of work back. Um, unlike a geologist, but uh, you know, tell us what you're seeing. Uh, in the last since since you've been around the the overall impact of the program into the oil and gas companies. Uh, thank you, Leon. Um, uh, I firstly, are you hear me um, clearly? Yeah, yeah, okay, clear. Great, great. Um, 
uh, well, firstly, I uh, took over from um, and by recommendation of uh, Mr. Bertrand, so to speak. And um, that was in 2015. And when I came on board, we had we had many um, <clears throat> variables at work um, in the economy, in the oil and gas sector in general, and even a change in appetite for graduates as well too, or incoming students. And um, the first thing uh, that I noticed when when I when I came in, there was definitely a paradigm shift in the intake content and the industry liaison, so to speak. And there was also some sort of um, the detraction a bit from the program, actually. And um, uh, really and truly, we had to um, delve deeper into why is this. And um, it all had to do with, I'm sorry, I'm getting a lot of feedback from someone, so sorry. Yeah. Um, it had a lot to do with the overall backdrop of global uncertainty in the oil and gas sector. Because over the last five years, we have been dealing with, uh, with approximately, yeah, uh, we have we have actually been dealing with uh, two um, uh, two dips in oil prices, so to speak, over a prolonged period of time. And as many would say it, um, over the past couple of years, we've been going through an oil and gas pandemic, so to speak. And um, no one is a, is really assured where the vaccine is going to come from, and if this is even going to be cured. You know what I mean? So. Um, and that resonates uh, amongst um, students who actually seek interest in reading up what's going on around the world, et cetera. And um, it has created some sort of detraction away from uh, petroleum geoscience. So we really tried, started to see a dip of about 20 to 30% in intake uh, between 2015 and uh, 2017 thereabouts. And then 2018, we had that dip in the oil and gas prices um, um, somewhat of a mini crash, so to speak, and um, and that did not help it at all. But what but what we did was that we did um, reach out into the social media space, so to speak, and engage UA marketing a bit more, and that helped us to reduce that number to only 10%. Whereby the cohorts, um, uh, as uh, Professor Dor alluded to earlier on, were a standard 15. Um, that was needed to um, to meet the matriculation requirements as well too for the university. Uh, we we somehow managed to bring back the number up to about 12, 11, 12, you know, an average about there. Um, but then we had a double whammy of the of the more recent oil and gas um, uh, dip in oil and gas prices again, and the overall the um, mental the attraction away from the program again, and we had to face. Um, at least 20 to 30 percent of our graduates not being um, not being able to find gainful employment, and that um, that resonates. As you know, everyone speaks. You know, um, everyone knows about the program, and um, once once you once you work in these multinationals and you work in the ministries, etc., everyone will say, "Well, it took me two years to get a job, three years to get a job," and that actually de de attracts a lot of folks. So um, so within the last five years, it's been a bit of seesaw up and down. Um, it's been like a propagating seismic wave, so to speak. So um, it's 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 definitely um, uh, been a bit of a challenge. And then when I joined in 2015, we had a 60% reduction across the board in um, in funding. Um, so we had to learn to survive um, with a with a fixed budget. We managed to bring down the operating cost of the program of of about 40% without even compromising the quality. So um, and we also um, recently have successfully completed two QARs, quality assurance reviews, and successfully re-accredited the program via the George Society of London, as well as the Energy, um, um, the Energy Institute International. Um, so yeah, Leon, it has been definitely a bit of an up and down. With yeah. respect to with respect to the future of the program, um, I don't know if I, if you want to speak to that now. Or we can leave that for another segment. So. Yep, we we will get there, and I think you will come back into that because that question has uh, I've got a I've got a survey up, and that question uh, is coming up. So so definitely we'll get there. Let me okay. okay. So clearly, guys, you're hearing you know um you're hearing where things have have been over the last few years. Brent, um, 
you know, in your time, you would have seen the impact of this, uh, you know, the students into, or, or I should say the graduates into the different oil and gas companies. What resonated with you in terms of overall impact? What did you see, you know, the, the quality of the, the folks coming out and, and the impact they had in, in the different companies? You're on mute, by the way. Good. <laughs> I think I can unmute you. Let me try. OK, no, you got it. Good. <laughs> what a question. Um, <laughs> when, when I first arrived, I mean, I wasn't there for the inception. The first year happened without me. Uh, I was still beavering away at Biostrat Associates, uh, working on Angostura Field and stuff like that. And so, um, in fact, it was Biostrat's undoing because they used to buy the newspapers every day and leave them on the desk. And I was leafing through and I, I saw an advert for a lecturer wanted for the program. And I thought, I'll try for that. And I, I joined after a year, after a, a very grueling interview by Richard, in, in which he basically said, what do you know about geology? So I, I was in luck. He had a piece of coral on his desk. I picked it up and said, you know, this, this makes limestone. And apparently that did the trick. But what I did find was that with the very early intake, there was a real sense of adventure. They knew that they were in uncharted territory. They knew that we were working together to make this work. And it, it was wonderful. The, the, the amount of work that you early students put in was phenomenal. Uh, over time, there was, I, I think the big shift really came with the introduction of CAPE uh, as opposed to A-levels. I stumbled across the CAPE Geography Examinations book in the UE bookshop one day and thought, look, this was stuff I was doing at all level. And we had a program in place that was asking students to be at a very high level and CAPE was letting them down. And as Wayne mentioned, that meant that some students were failing courses and having to repeat them. And for them, it was very trying. Put that against the back, backdrop of shifting oil prices, and it became extremely challenging for the students. I, I would have a constant stream coming through my office. Why am I doing this? Why am I here? Uh, frequently in floods of tears. I, I had a box of tissues handy. And I, I had to reassure them that you know this was a worthwhile program. It was a worthwhile degree. I think a lot of them were rather blinkered as to where they saw their careers going. You know, I like geophysics. That's the way I want to be. And we were saying, no, there are other fields that you can get into. There is a, you know, there is an aspect, say, of petroleum law, which is open to you with further study. I think with early students such as yourself, the industry was thirsty for you. With later students, not so much so. So your degree was seen as an entry level qualification to the industry. Later on, it became obvious that they would have to do further studies in order to be able to get into industry in the first place. Does that answer your question? I'm sure in a very garbled yes. way, but. Yes, but uh, no, I think you have. Um, it's interesting to hear Ryan's perspective, yours and how, you know, a couple of different, both external factors and I guess just a, a change in, in structure within the education system here potentially had an impact. So yeah, thank you. Um, Okay, guys, it, we, we talked a lot about, you know, the past and then um, uh, Ryan give, gives us an insight on where things are. If you if you had, this is really for Brent, uh, Professor Dor, Mr. Butron, if you had a free drop to do things differently, you know, please be disciplined about this. Don't give me a shopping list. If you had a free drop to do something different, looking back on it today, you can go back in time. Uh, what would you do? Brent, we could start with you since you 
just uh, in uh, in my line of sight. <laughs> you're, you're still on mute. OK, right, good. What would I like to have seen? Uh, I think what I would have liked to have seen is an impossibility, given the nature of Trinidad. I would have liked to have seen more and varied field work. Uh, I was teach I was teaching three courses: biostratigraphy, sedimentology, and stratigraphy. And there were only a limited number of outcrops that were available to us. And I I would be I was I was also involved with Clem Ramroop's field mapping course at the time, and I realised we were going back to the same outcrops over and over again. And the looks on students' faces, you know, we're going to see the Carolina Sands. And what? We've been there, done that. And trying to tell them, no, there is more information to be had from this outcrop was a real challenge. And I didn't, maybe I didn't know the geology of Trinidad well enough, or maybe I didn't know where the outcrops were. I knew some, some of them, by all means. Um... Mayaro, Carolina Sands, all the usual ones, you know, the Guaracara quarries, things like that. But as I say, it was very challenging. I, I knew you weren't getting as much field as experience as I had had as a geologist. And I wanted you to see at the surface what you could then translate to the subsurface. But to look at it with fresh eyes every time, that became really challenging for you. I'm using the word challenging a lot, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. um, so that's what I would like to have seen. Okay, no, take, good, good one. Uh, Richard, like Rich, Richard, Richard, if you've got the funding, Texas sounds wonderful. <laughs> Prof Dor, tell us, if you had a free drop, what would you like? You are on mute, just to remind you. You're still on mute. While while you find while let me let me uh fill this space with uh maybe Mr. Bertrand, you tell us and then prof I can uh help you on this side find find you on mute. Okay, um, before we get um, to that, I just wanted to, to give recognition to the industry involvement um, in the initial parts and, and the closeness we had. Um, I really wanted to say something about a liaison committee um, comprising staff from, from UWI and, and uh, delegates, if you like, from, the, from industry. And they played a significant role both in curriculum development and in uh, in summer summer programs. Um, so I just wanted to relate that and to the fact that our our um, the um, professor Dor talked about the 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 architectural work that we got done at Petrotrain in a couple of days, um, but then the construction, uh, the money from the construction and the and the equipment. In, in those in those were a, a lecture room and a, and a computer room um, came from um, a landmark on Harry Burton and Slumberger, um, uh, the petrol petrol folks in a lab that was um, called I think the BG lab. Um, yeah, Shell sure wasn't around in those days. Uh, so I wanted to give some some recognition of that. And what would I do different? Um, well, the field work, the field work was, was, was something that uh, one of our people at the Ministry of Energy, I think, complained about that we didn't, we didn't do enough geology, <laughs> real hard rock geology. Um, and, we, and, and my comment to that while we were in Trinidad and um, the, you know, the amount of outcrops and so on and the amount of people that knew about these outcrops but I also want to see that, say that um, Xavier um, is currently solving those problems. He takes everybody everywhere, and when you can't get there, you use a drone. So um, that that 
that part of it seems to be resolved. Um, I would have uh, wanted to, I had a little resistance to the program. I don't know if, if, if uh, Professor Doe even knows this, but I wanted to, to involve Mona some more. And I wanted to see the program for its sustainability really to be, to be a fourth year of the Mona program. Um, of course, in those days, you, you, each, each campus was fighting for, for the same thing. So um, we, we had our own petroleum geoscience program. Um, and I, I used to tell my graduates, my students in the first year, that you don't come out up here with a geology degree. And if it's a geology, you want to do go to Mona. Um, you came out of here with a petroleum geoscience degree ready to work. <laughs> so you would go into an office and you would and you would be ready to work. You don't you don't really need the training. In fact, you could have trained people. Um, so uh, there was a little difference there, um, but the geology necessity for geology was always quite clear. Um, I, I I see um, some of the lecturers on uh, in the program are are, are on the. Um, are on the chat and they may have some comments to make about that. Um, the, so I would have wanted to, to, to talk to the Mona a little bit more on, on what, what this would have been. Also, it would have been, it would have been better to have some, a, a little longer time between, between approval of the program and getting it started. We had a, a month and of course it worked for us, but, but it would have been nice to, to be able to get um, you know, some some stronger staff. And we did have some weak staff. Brent would know about that in the first year. Um, and and, and we, we fixed that up by the second year. Um, so th those would those would be my 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 things. The, the the curriculum would have to change, but that would change with the liaison <coughs> committee and what they would prefer to see um, as part of the program. So um, the 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 strength of the external um, examiners was also a good help. And they, 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 you know, when you're doing external exams, you have to prepare the question and prepare the answer as well. I don't think they had to, um, I don't think they had to correct our answers <laughs> at any time, but they did question the marking scheme sometimes. Uh, and, and I remember in one program, they talked a lot about how these students do so well with, with, um, take home work, but at exam time, they, they seem to fail. So the working in groups or, or whatever was, was a bit of a problem. It seems the bright people carry the, the, the weaker ones and so on. Um, so some of those things needed to, need still probably still need to be corrected. I don't know. Yeah. I've been out of the program four years now. So that's, okay. that's me. Good. Prof. Dor. I'm hoping you've uh, found your mute button. We still can't hear you. Your mute button should be at the top right, right of the screen. Near the leave. Don't Near click leave though, okay? Okay. If he, have we lost? No, he's still around. Technical difficulties, and we did a trial. Everyone. I, I well, let me let me let me just be um what do we call it? Big up some people. Um, <laughs> Professor Doe had a style about him, where we were able to get these things done, right? I might have been able to to actually do some things that I could use Petrotrain to do, like use of the lab and getting architectural drawings and that kind of thing. But Professor Doe knew how to get things through the system. And and I told him I would say this, that um, you know, when when he when he got no for an answer over the phone, he would put on his, his jacket and tie and walk it through and put on his very British accent. 
and um, you know you can't resist that. Eh? So that was how we got things through. <laughs> uh, I hear me now. On okay. cue. There you go. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know what I've done. Uh, one thing that we've forgotten about is that our, our first external examiner was Aftag Khan, who actually was a professor in geophysics at Leicester University. But more importantly, he was a Trinidadian and really wanted to add things. And um, we would also point out that um, Trevor Jackson came onto the program as teaching. He too was a Trinidadian, but he was also professor of geology at Mona. So for me, it was really it's, it was petroleum geoscience engineering. And I think it's the width of the program, not just the geology, but the width of the other things. Because one thing that's very dangerous in a, in a company is a numerate geologist. Uh, the others don't like it because you can talk common sense and you know the geology, whereas the simulation people, the geophysicists and the engineers don't understand the geology, so they talk rubbish. Um, uh, Sorry, think, they don't understand the simulations either, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, all, all, I think at the beginning we had rather a lot of, uh, I'm going to use the word interference, is that the right word from the Dean? Enthusiastic interference was the one thing. Uh, but I was at the beginning, I wanted to bring Taddy Rajpal Singh into the program because he, he did know uh, a lot of the fields and that was that was uh, useful for that. And um, we, we put an application in for uh, accreditation to the Geologist Society and we were the first overseas program that was brought on. It was brought on by uh, um, Peter Stiles, who was going to become the next president of, of the Geological Society at that time. And we were accredited before we had graduated anybody, which I think A was probably naughty, but it was also uh, successful. Um, and his comment was that this program is good because of the quality of the staff we were bringing in, because a lot of the staff were uh, in the field, teach, uh, doing work, and then they came in in the afternoon or morning the next day to teach. And uh, you can't get uh, it more hotter than that. So at the beginning, we were having uh, a lot of uh, people able to teach and also were uh, senior positions in industry. And I think that, makes, that made it very, very useful for our students. Uh, the other thing was the, um, uh, the students spending their time in industry. And uh, in fact, they spent one day a week in industry during their terms as well. And I thought it was rather nice always that students would be their usual dressed up, usual self in students gear on the Monday and the Tuesday and Wednesday they disappeared. And if you didn't meet them, they were dressed up to go into industry. And uh, I think it did them all a lot of good. Lovely, good. Okay, let's uh, let's maybe take some questions. I don't want to only use the uh, the questions that I've got. Let me ask Brent. Brent, we've got a, a fun question for you. What's the most memorable question a student has ever asked you? <laughs> you must remember something. You are on mute while you think. <laughs> Okay, brace yourselves, everybody. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would have students who came to me in biostratigraphy in first year with a very strong religious background. And especially there was a belief in creation and the need to... I, 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 I was about to, to introduce them to a geological column that went back four and a half billion years and they got this thing you know the seven days and so on so i would start out by saying you know you can't really believe everything that's in genesis please brace it brace yourselves for this i, I know you're going to censor me for this uh but i i would i would say you know when god created adam did he give him testicles and it would floor them completely you know and i would say well why you know there was no eve and one student said to me adam had testicles and that has stuck with me for years you did ask leon there's my answer 
Oh, not dear. what you expected at That's all, it. I'm sure. I should have paused the recording, but okay, <laughs> now it's locked in the history of all. Our... <laughs> no, sounds man. Like a, sounds Thank like a Leo chauvinist, though. Thank, Thank <laughs> you, man. Oh, dear. I wish... Uh... <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, we still have we still have a little bit of time, maybe a bit of a fun question. There are some quite uh, deep uh, questions about the future of the program, Ryan. We'll get there and, and where, where to with this. You know, give me a fun memory, Professor Do. You've got to have, and please, one, yeah? We, we strapped on time. <laughs> what, is your, what is a fond memory that you had uh, in the program? Um, the friendship of Wayne is one. Uh, second, second one is uh, smiling at Bridget Brereton and saying, well, we've done it in six months. Uh, and for me, it, it isn't fun, but it's just the pleasure of seeing the quality and seeing where, seeing where students are getting to and going uh, and seeing how they've grown from what I like to think. The most important thing that I think we did was give each student at least 10 technical talks. That they could then talk elsewhere and whatever no matter how good you are you've got to get picked and if you can't get picked it doesn't matter so how do you get picked you can give a good talk and you'll be picked again and uh, i feel bringing that in and giving them that education another one was the the, the general topics where we we uh, had students in just two and we spent an hour chatting about papers or something uh, and that was more like an Oxford tutorial type system. And I felt that that gave the students more confidence of meeting. Um, Good. So. Okay, nice. Uh, Mr. Bertrand, fondest uh, memory. Most of the students that came to see me individually was um, people that were doing projects at Petrotrain where they didn't think the supervision was good enough, one. And two, how can they change their grade? <laughs> And they only needed one mark to change it. Why can't you give me a mark, please? Da, da, da. But so that wasn't to, fun. That, that was, that was about, difficult. We need to talk about this offline, yeah? Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had most fun in the communications course, which we were given. We, we, we needed to see that people could, could um, communicate, not just, not just geologically, but, um, you know, in, in general topics and so on. And um, being lazy as I am, I had the students mark mark themselves okay but i had the um always uh, when i say mark themselves they, 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 they would give up they would give a presentation let's say um, a powerpoint presentation and the rest of the students in the class would mark them with one with one thing i i did not accept 10 out of 10. um so if anybody put 10 out of 10 um, 10 out of 10 means that there is no room for, for improvement and um, i would give my own mark so, so that was fun. But the kinds of topics that they chose, they, you know, they, they had to put a topic um, which included about two, two or three more than the number of students in the class. And then um, each person will, will pick out one of the topics they're going to speak on. And um, the kinds of things they put in uh, and the kinds of uh, presentations they made were, were very interesting and then of course the marks that they gave each other for that was even more interesting so um i think i enjoyed that more than i enjoyed any of the geology or geophysics <laughs> honest i like it nice ryan what about you your your fondest memory in the in the program today yeah tell us well leon firstly uh you just slip back into mute, Ryan. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so as you know, um, <clears throat> uh, well, in my five years, I've, I've I've come across quite a few of uh, I would say characters uh, within within the classes themselves. But fun times. Um, but I never forgot this. It was my first year of joining the program, and Wayne was actually there trying to um, help me organize the PGSE 2016 projects with the internships from the companies. And they had to do presentations. And man, they always uh, nail biting and nervous, et cetera. And I didn't really know this third year student so well because I came in, you know what I mean, in that year. So that student was were taught by a different cohort, you know? Um, so Wayne was in the room and I think it was 
uh, a, a series of company folks, etc. And the student had about 10 minutes before their presentation was, was up. And the, the student walked up the, um, the, the famous petroleum geoscience stairs and came up, you know, with a loud thumping sound and knocked on my door and very nicely, Leon, in the nicest way, asked, um, Dr. Ramsuk, I'm very nervous. And the only thing that calms me down is a drink. And I was like, okay, so why are you telling me this? Well, I kind of did my assessment and it was either I asked uh, Mr. Bertrand, uh, Mr. Um, Dr. Sahu, or, or at that point, um, or Professor Wilson. And I think you are the most likely candidate. <laughs> now that's a true story. <laughs> and this, this student was so, so nervous. And this was my first year. And the first thing I, that um, came to my mind, wow, fun times in this place. But, you know, like, so it was good. It was good. But that was one of my memories. And then we have so many on the field trips, you know, because we did increase the field trips by at least 30 to 40 percent across the program as part of an accreditation requirement that was needed um, after our accreditation exercise in 2017-2018. Nice. I like it. I like the uh, courage of the individual. Good one. <laughs> Okay, let's let's maybe pivot to um, and I'm by the way for our guests that we've got a lot of people on the call <laughs> for everyone dialing over a hundred. Um, I I've got this menti code. If you go in the chat, if you go to menti.com, I'll I'll write it again. It's in the it's in the chat window. You can you can pitch your questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into that now as we've hit the hour mark. Um, this is for, for you all. Do you think the course, and there are a few questions around renewables, the course may be running, the program may be running, it's, you know, course is natural, uh, but and it's a time to maybe pivot to renewables given where everything is going. Um, I'd like to hear, you know, both from your perspective, Ryan, you just gave some, you know, uh, quite a quite a serious view on where things have been over the last few years, but also from from these guys on, you know, is this is this probably where this program should start pivoting? So maybe Ryan, you can kick us off. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, well, definitely. Um, firstly, before we even we even had the um, our Wayne did mention earlier, and I mean, I would support that, is that this, the Petroleum Geoscience Program will not exist without industry support, hands down. And even so, more so now as well too. And um, we keep saying industry support, but I think the societies have played a very pivotal role in not only the program, but helping nurture the professional development of our students. That is the AAPG, the GSTT, uh, the SPE and now the SEG and I believe that this has to continue and they will also form part of the stakeholder um, uh, uh, cohort that we have to approach as to where do we go next in the program so to speak. Um, the Industrial Liaison Committee has recently as of this semester been, a, been appraised of the or apprised of the of where the university is heading so it's not solely the petroleum geoscience program. The Faculty of Engineering has set up a committee for the transition of programs that we don't think that will become relevant in the near future or that needs to become relevant with what is required by industry stakeholders or the industry at large. And as such, um, we slowly started to pivot the program in not only a teaching philosophy, but a hybrid delivery model of research and teaching, where the research has to be guided by what is needed um, or what is relevant by the industry. Uh, the faculties uh, committee, that is the Faculty of Engineering, um, now wants to convert most of its programs into MEng programs, Masters of Engineering, okay, and or with respect to the Petroleum Geoscience program, an MSI program, actually which is akin very, it was a four-year program that is, has the akin of a curriculum similar to that of um, uh, most of the UK universities and a few of the US university, U universities, such as Royal Holloway, uh, the University of Edinburgh, etc. And also um, uh, some of the US universities where 
where, where you can actually do a full geology um, degree in three years, but then you can get an MSI afterwards as well to, by doing an additional specialization year. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to pivot the program that has core curriculum already, some very good courses in there, including the engineering mixed courses. Um, and your third and fourth year is where you actually start to get a bit specialized into the different avenues that you want to pursue. And some of those things does pivot into uh, geothermal energy, hydrothermal energy, energy systems in general, and um, as well as a bit of um, uh, more specialized fields such as geomechanics. Um, and uh, well, I mentioned geothermal energy already, but stuff like solar and um, solar energy, et cetera, is already existing in the uh, Faculty of Science and Technology and has already been offered um, in the form of short courses and as well as um, uh, MPhil and PhDs uh, through the Department of Electrical Engineering. So not stepping on tours with, 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 with the rest of the uh, faculty and the rest of the university, we, we actually sat back and decided that, yes, if we're going to do this, it has to be well thought out. Um, we have to get the stakeholder um, in, um, engagement and the first thing that we did, we reached, we coincidentally, we had a meeting with uh, BPTT on funding. And when we mentioned the so-called transition and some of the courses that we're thinking about, they were immediately um, uh, um, fully supportive of it. But obviously, it's going to take um, a structure in a curriculum that is well thought out, as I said before, and takes um, uh, all the opinions of all the stakeholder groups into consideration. And we have just started that process, actually, in building out the curriculum, et cetera, as a draft to send out to stakeholder. And we will not only send it out to our industrial liaison committee, but to all the companies and all the societies, which which in themselves have a, 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 a larger alumni and alumni reach, which is very critical for the program moving forward. Thank you for that, Ryan. Um... Some of the some of the chaps from from the old times, uh, Brent, uh, Mr. Bertrand, Professor Do, what what are your thoughts? You know, what are your thoughts on the program now? Where is it going to head to? You know, you all are fully aware of what's going on in the oil and gas sector now. What what are you thinking in terms of a future for this? Um, I think I think one's got to be a little devious about this. Um, uh, and the most, most important thing is to find out in, in the in the companies who who has the power of the checkbook, and make friends with them. And there are, uh, for instance, Leon, you must have getting close to the power of the checkbook. So what one would do is come to talk with you, and say, what is it that you think um, Shell would want us to be able to produce? So that we and who is who is it within Shell that we should go with your help? Not necessarily you have to do anything; just pass it to the right way to say what do you want us to what do we want our students to know, so that they can that they will get maybe a slight preference in being employed. So I I, I feel uh, you've got to do it on a one to one and finding out who where the right people are. I can give you one in in BP. Uh, because of things that we did to help. Uh, when I when I was there, we had um, a, 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 one of the, the liaison person was Azim Ali, and he was incredibly helpful. And I would go down. He liked me to be in my suit, which I always was, and he liked to show me off to everybody. But before he left, he said, "How much do you need?" And that is how Brent got his money. That's how we got our money for all, a whole lot of other things, because. It's done on a personal business, just talking one to one. But it's got to be with the right people. It's no use talking to someone who who say yes. You've got to have, find the people who have the power to be able to influence where the money comes from. And then those are the things. Now, just a quick aside: Imperial College has stopped teaching petroleum geoscience and stopping petroleum engineering and moving into the energy things. Uh, Trinidad's slightly different because we rely on energy, petroleum. To produce, but even so, we've got to use the the the, the um, principles and change the tone such that we are looking towards the energy for the future. 
and uh, it might be worth talking to the electrical engineering people as well. Professor Sharma up there, he was doing these things 20 years ago, uh, or even 30 years ago. So it's a question of getting the links and finding out what people want, not we think, what, what they want, and then working the way around it. Yep, I got you. That's a, that's a good, good one. Um, uh, Brent, what are you thinking? Future of this program, uh, given everything going on now? I I can really only speak from the perspective of my own field, which was biostratigraphy. Biostratigraphers realized decades ago that they had a problem because geophysicists had appeared on the ground. <laughs> and in a lot of basins, we were just no longer needed. We were needed in Trinidad because the geology is so complex that you need the biostratigraphy to, to unravel it. But elsewhere, they, they began wondering, well, how can we keep ourselves relevant? And we started to work on using our the living relatives of our fossil creatures as environmental tools. They sit on the seafloor and they pump seawater through themselves for about three months or so. And they will react to anything that is in that seawater. It could be heavy metal pollutants, for example. Microplastics are having an impact at the moment. I think that biostratigraphy or marine micropaleontology correctly focused could play a role in what I'm hearing in determining, examining the environmental impact of any offshore projects that are put forward. There you go. Thank you. Okay. And, and, and perhaps climate change things too, maybe. Climate change, absolutely. I'm working on climate change at the moment with a group of young people in, in Wales um, you, you, where monitoring the, the creatures are, around the shoreline to see how things are changing over time, taking short course to, to try and get a sort of deeper Holocene perspective. There's no reason why these things can't be done in Trinidad. Mr. Bertrand, where, where do you see this heading, the, the program? I, I, like, I like the MSI program. In fact, I, I, I had brought up some of that before I left, but of course only at low levels. Um, ever since I think I saw UTT was doing something like that, and I, I didn't like the idea that they should have MSI programs. Um, <laughs> so, so we were looking at that, and it would also have been been good to be able then to incorporate Mona, which is which is what I you know I started off wanting to do. So, if you add a fourth year, um, it not only allows you to do that, but it allows you to get people. Um, a little more in detail of some of the things that they that they currently do and and, and um, don't don't have the opportunity to, to to get into detail that is is required. Some of the software um, that you that you use in, in programs these days. Um, the change in of the new energy program, of course. Um, since you would share, I would think if you want people who speak Spanish and can um, and can negotiate cross borders uh, <laughs> um, these days. Um, uh, but seriously, then there need to be people um, with science, with with reservoir engineering, and those kind of backgrounds who who can properly negotiate um, what you have to negotiate when you start going across borders with reserves. And some of those kinds of things, I think, uh, uh, would be good to have in the in the program. Some program go on the program negotiations. I like I like okay. your thinking on this. Good, thank you, guys. I think we are coming close to the end of this panel session. I think everyone just looking at some of the memories <laughs> memories being shared in the chat. People are just happy to see you hear your voices after so long and let also, me just say one other thing sorry Leon. Yeah, sure, sure we didn't we didn't talk about the graduates at all well um, i was about yeah go go for it because i'm about to reach out to, to everybody on the call to help with the celebration but you 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 please share yeah. share what you'd like on, uh, on um i think we've always we've always i don't think there is a cohort that that didn't um 
didn't do well. Um, and the only reason a whole lot of people are not getting jobs is because they don't have jobs out there. Um, but they, they've been doing well. Uh, and some of many, uh, we used to have a, a, a um, keep a statistic about how many people do postgrad degrees. But um, in the earlier cohorts, cohorts anyway, they have a lot of PhDs um, from various places and they have risen into the, into the um, industry. I don't want to name names because I'll forget other people. Um, but there were, there were some interesting ones. I remember one class I was called in by the, by the, the um, principal in those days, um, um, Professor Sank had become principal and told that if I, can't, if I can't recruit more people into the program, they will have to shut it down. At that time, there was a, there was a graduating class of eight people um, seven of whom were women, and um, the, the first job offer was made to a guy. It was it was a field job in a geophysical acquisition program, <laughs> but I, I found that was an interesting class, and I'm sure I'm sure um, Brent would have um, remember that class very well. Uh, but but the, the the graduates have done well, very well. Um, and uh, and I, I I can't I can't complain. I thought I thought we've done a good job. Part of my part of my own um, satisfaction is that I feel I have left somewhat some some of a legacy, in that these people are going to be there around for quite a while, um, and so on, and they could continue to pray for me. Okay. No, that's uh, very kind. Thank you. Thank you for that. Actually, as we. As we're talking about the graduates, let me make a couple of um, announcements to all. Well, OK, we were at 100. We're at 99 now. Please stay here. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are we are trying to celebrate the program. You all have been sharing a couple of images, um, you know, nice memories. Uh, we want we want you to please contribute via the GSCT. We are going to be um, doing this with APG as well to to do a nice publication to talk about you know fun things right uh, memories like you're sharing and also technical you know focus on on some of the the alumni uh, some technical papers and things like that so we really want and we will be reaching out we will advertise it to get you to to help with this I think I'm, I'm imagining opening this publication, right? A magazine with just all of our memories and some technical stories, a focus on diversity, and it will be nice to to hear from you know some of some of the the women that have graduated um, from this because the oil and gas industry was notorious in the past, um, you know, for being male dominated, and that that is changing. We want to do something with a focus on that. We want to also, you know, ideally, if you all have pictures, send it to us, right? And again, we'll, we'll advertise. We would love to do a little yearbook, well, a multi-yearbook to show our pictures from then. I know some funny ones have been sent around on social media already. So please, yeah, we will be reaching out to all of you on this call to really help celebrate this, which I think is really special, right? 20 years of this program, and you can see where it's come from to where it, where it is now. And, and you know, Ryan and others are talking about where it could go to. So, you know, we're part of something special. So that was just a big a, a plug and, and a call for help there. Um, uh, my, my colleagues on the executive board have also told me to just remind you that the hammer issue is out now. Um, you can go on the website. We will advertise it again. Uh, you should have seen it in the ad for this. Click in there. It's, it's it's really easily accessible. And anybody that doesn't have their membership renewed, you can easily do it online. You know, COVID times, everything is, uh, you know, just do it on a website. We, uh, you know, we, we're not in, uh, collecting funds, things like that. So, OK, that was just a bit of announcements. We are, we are definitely you know, really thankful to all of you for this. Um, I just enjoyed, actually, I do want to just share a quick personal thing, even doing the call with Professor Dor the other day. Um, yeah, something about just seeing him, hearing him. Uh, it was supposed to be a two minute test of Microsoft Teams turned into 30 minutes because it felt like catching up with um, someone, you know, from a long time and same for you, Mr. Bertrand. So, Thank you so much, guys. Um, 
I really do want to, to say, you know, and I think on behalf of everyone, how much we appreciate all of your efforts and, you know, everything you have done for us in the background and in the foreground on, on our, you know, ed, uh, and on the education that we got and also the careers that, that uh, most of us have had. I mean, so, so yeah, we really are grateful, very appreciative and uh, thoroughly enjoyed this session with you today. Um, and we look forward to, you know, maybe bringing you back in or, or maybe you can write some stuff for us uh, as part of the hammer as well. Uh, Leon, may I uh, just say I congratulate all our graduates, especially those that have gone on further. There was a, um, one of the external examiners was Howard Johnson, who was a prof in geology at Imperial. And he just said to me once, Richard, if you've got any more like so and so, send them to us. And uh, three uh, of our graduates have got uh, PhDs from Imperial, two with scholarships, which is very unusual. And most, quite a lot of the students got distinctions, which is fairly rare at Imperial. That tells us the quality of the standards. And then we, we look further and then you can go around um, various other universities in the UK and then Canada and America. And I think uh, our small cohort was at 300 now, the, the numbers who have got uh, high quality degrees says something about the quality of our students, which makes teaching, quite frankly, easy. Uh, you just push them in the right direction, say do it, and then come and talk about it, and they can. And uh, um, one, one thing that I didn't say was I used to give uh, an essay uh, to write, and I used to have it, and uh, I was on my own at Christmas, and so for Christmas Day, I had the pleasure of reading them. And so I, if you like, I was in bed with all the, all the students at Christmas uh, reading these essays. And I will say one, and I, uh, uh, one, I gave 10 out of 10, which is, uh, which just, just amazed me because it, was, it just flowed so beautifully. And, uh, but the, I got great pleasure in seeing uh, what people could produce uh, writing these things. And they weren't easy. Um, I can't remember what I gave you, but, uh, um, but they Four. weren't easy. Four, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's, uh, um, I uh, hello, Grant. Hello, Grant. Hello, Dr. Ward. <laughs> um, any, any final words uh, from Dr. Wilson, Mr. Bertrand, Ryan? Anything you all want to say before we close off today? Yeah, um, <clears throat> Leon, just, just, just to add what... Um, what 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 Wayne and Professor Doha has said. Um, uh, we are one of the only programs that have such a high turnover of um, uh, postgraduates, so to speak. You know, students um, moving on to high, higher forms of education. Um, we have a uh, 56 percent to date of our graduates have master's degrees. 56, and we currently have 12 PhDs. Oh, okay. Good. 13, I think that's, now. I like those facts. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. hasn't graduated yet, Prof, but yeah, 13. <laughs> yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Wilson. One from me is that um, I really enjoyed the fact that I was able to work with undergraduate students on projects that we could make into papers. I think that is something that's extremely rare for an undergraduate program. I started with Anne Ramsuk, where we just battered a piece of my PhD around to get some sense out of it, and went on. And to, towards the end of my time at uh, UWE, I would have students queuing up to join me in doing paleontology programs uh, projects for their third year, with the knowledge that there would be a paper at the end of it. It was a delight to be able to do that. Mr. Bertrand, anything else from you before we close off? Well, these days, all I, all I, all I tell people is to stay safe and stay strong. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed, and and to everyone. And I'm still in the I'm still in the in the teaching business, so every now and again I get a chance to move around. <laughs> Good. Except I'm teaching I'm teaching the real work now, the the uh, PVET work, vocational. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, and to all of our guests. Wow, overwhelming response. The GSET and APG definitely. Um, yeah, we appreciate this. Thank you so much. Please be safe. Take care of yourselves. Stay at home in Trinidad if you're there. <laughs> um, and and uh, yeah, bunker down. We'll get through this. Take care, everyone. Okay. Thank, Bye -bye. You, Leon. Thank, Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Take care.